Pradeep Panrana, Managing Director and CEO of Arthi River Cement. It's a pleasure to be speaking to you. Good morning. Morning. Pradeep, today you had the AGM and it's always wonderful to see these faces because I've been coming a few years and they really have been very loyal shareholders of yours, I think. Uh, you know, the, the shareholders that you see here, many of them have been with us for 15 years or, or when we listed in 1997. Can I just quickly just run through the first half numbers? Um, uh, we saw an increase in turnover from the f previous first half. Yeah. We saw Tanga come on stream now uh, in the second half of that first half. In the second quarter, yes. Second quarter of, of the two quarters. How would you describe those, those results? The increase in turnover was not marked compared to, to, to the last quarter, last half of, of 2014, mm. where sales actually went down a little bit, but we were up 24% in the first half. And month on month, since April this year, sales have been increasing uh, exponentially. So with our own clinker, with a high strength clinker that we make and a much, much higher strength cement that we now produced at all our plants in Dar es Salaam, in Kaloleni, in, in, in Arthur River, there's a huge improvement in, 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 the, in the quality and in the reception of the market for our cement. You've seen that, and you described it as exponential. It is uh, growing month on month, mm -hmm. and I think by the end of this year, yes. yes, I think we should be able to call it exponential. The benefit of our own clinker, we yes. are entirely in control of our production process and the chemistry of the way clinker yes. is manufactured, allows us to produce high strength cement. Mm -hmm. Not only the 32.5 grade uh, cement, but 42.5, which is increasingly used in in multi-story construction in, in Dar es Salaam, in Nairobi, and other parts of, the, of East Africa, but also the 52.5 grade cement, which is essentially used for infrastructure projects and, and um, in, in the SGR project. And, and, and you're, you're producing a lot of this 52.5? We have started manufacturing 52.5 both in Kenya and in Tanzania mm -hmm. as of November last year. And that's tapping into the infrastructure demand curve, is it? This is a segment which is growing, and we expect this to grow even further. Yes, yes. so it's growing faster than the, than the, the cement curve of about 10% or so. The infrastructure segment of, of, the, of the market in East Africa, which is now about 13, 13 and a half million tons, is still fairly low uh, in percentage term, terms, probably about 12, 13%. But this segment is the fastest growing segment in, in the growth which is at, which is growing at the market which is growing at an overall uh, factor of about 10 12 percent Pradeep you know you, you took this big position in the Tanga clinker facility um, that uh, is now I think at about 70 percent cap capacity utilization and expected to move up higher in the second half just tell us in tell us what informed your thinking around that and the, and, and the competitive advantage it, has, it has given you. If we are able to capture the full value chain mm -hmm. of manufacturing of cement, from mining of the limestone to converting that into clinker, into cement, and further distributing the different qualities of cement that are required, the different strength of cement that are required, then we have a far better competitive position than our uh, competitors who are importing clinker. Clinker is the basic raw material. Mm -hmm. The differential between manufacturing locally and importing clinker through the ports of Mombasa or Dar es Salaam is, is tremendous. We are able to produce cement at nearly two thirds of the cost of the landed cost of imported clinker. So this gives us an additional margin uh, to, to compete and, and also to be in charge of our own quality of the, and of the qualities of the cement that we manufacture. East Africa at the moment still imports nearly 50% of its clinker requirements. Tanzania may be self-sufficient now in the years going forward, but Kenya is still deficit, as is Uganda. Mm -hmm. With our clinker plant fully integrated backwards, we are, first of all, uh, more price competitive, and, and, and we have the lowest cost manufacturing cost base, predominantly because we have the excess capacity, which has come on stream at one of the lowest cost per ton of installed capacity anywhere in, in Africa in, in the last 10 or 15 years. This makes us even more competitive 
uh, than, than other clinker manufacturers in, in the region. Let me now touch on you know, the volatility we've seen in our currencies, which has really been a situation across the sub-Saharan African continent. And if you look at emerging markets, similar story in currency, currency moves, the dollar's been very strong. Um, obviously, that sort of interfered with the results here because you took um, a you t you 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 took a, um, a hit because of that. What what? But however, has this had any upside for you in the sense that with a much weaker currency, does that made a difference in in other business models where they're importing clinker? Oof. Devaluation of the currency, both in Tanzania and, and in, in in Kenya, has been very swift and and fairly large. But this cuts both ways. Mm. Imports have now become more expensive. Uh, local manufacturing, but cheaper relative to, to the devaluation that we've seen. In Tanzania, nearly 10% of the market, about 300,000 tons of, 350,000 tons of cement were previously being imported. Today, you can buy rhino cement in Dar es Salaam cheaper than I any imported cement, whether that has, that the cement has paid duty or not. So imports have virtually stopped since February or March this year in Tanzania. Likewise, those companies which are importing clinker are also paying a lot more for the imported clinker. It makes us more competitive. And thirdly, cement pricing is, is eventually dollarized because a lot of our costing uh, and of the other com companies manufacturing cement are dollar based. So we think this will catch up, but we have at the moment, more, at, more of an advantage by the devaluation. Uh, forex losses, of course, have to be uh, posted in our balance sheet. Um, we hope we will be able to recover part of this through, uh, through our export earnings in, in US dollars. And hopefully, uh, when AFC converts into in their, their loan notes into equity, the forex loss a portion to AFC's $53 million dollars outstanding will, will be reversed in our balance sheet. So just to have an idea of dollar borrowing on the balance sheet, what is the amount of dollar borrowing we have? Today we have uh, dollar borrowings of about $170 million. This is composed of uh, not only loan notes to AFC, but uh, uh, lines of credit that we have from our banks, including letters of credit, including uh, uh, commitments that we have made to suppliers which fall due within the, within the next uh, couple of years. The shareholder I was speaking to said you had this five-year plan and I, that's how I think of you. Are you on your five-year plan? If you look forward now, are you where you want to be? I think the fundamentals of the economy are still strong. Yes. Cement consumption has been growing at more than 10% a year throughout East Africa, much higher in Tanzania than in, in Kenya. Um, the fundamentals of, of cement consumption remain strong with, with the need for more infrastructure, for need for more housing, need for more schools and so on. And I think we are on an upward trend for the next 25, 30 years at least. What this means at, at an average growth rate of about 10 to 12 percent, every six or seven years you need, you, you double the quantity of cement that is consumed. And a typical cement plant in today's, uh, uh, today's economy is about a million, million and a half tons. So you need one new plant every two years. I think we are on the right course. We have, we have established the capacity. This capacity, at the moment, we are only producing at, of, of the total capacity that we have this year will be about 50% of our total sales. As we ramp up more capacity for clinker and finished cement, we will begin to see the benefits of the expansion that we've carried out over the last five years. So next five years, we're looking at a growth where we, we move our sales from about 1.2, 1.3 million tons of cement to about 2.5 million tons and, and have our rightful market share in both Kenya and Tanzania of about 20, 22 percent. Is, is that your optimal percentage rate you are looking for? That would be uh, uh, at least a minimum uh, uh, market share that we, should, we, we are aiming at, considering that there are three or four other uh, multinational companies in the market. And I think it's a fair market share to have. Mm. Uh, we are looking at serving uh, different segments of the market, especially with our high strength cement. Um, not, not all companies are able to produce that or to deliver that where it is needed at the right price in the right, in the right uh, uh, quantities. So we think we are properly geared mm. to serving 
the, the high end of the market with our 42.5 grade cement and our 52.5 grade cement. Can I touch on what has always been a little baby of yours, which is the fertilizer business? Um, I remember five years ago you were talking about it, and, and now we're beginning to see real traction in the earnings. Um, can you just characterize what's happened there, the growth that we saw year on year? I think it was up two and a half times, if I'm not mistaken. What's the story there? And does it belong in a cement company? And what, would you, what do you want to do with it? So let me, let, me, let me start by saying how this fertilizer business came about. The origins of Arthur River mining were with agricultural lime. Yes. We, we continue to supply 40 years on uh, agricultural lime to many coffee estates, many, many other uh, organized sectors of, of, uh, of agriculture in Kenya and in Tanzania as well. About 12 years ago, when the cement market was a little uh, with a little low, uh, with, the, with the downturn in the economy in 1999 um, to 2002, we decided to diversify into formulated fertilizers using uh, agricultural lime and our experience with, with the, the agriculture sector at the time. What we, what we do with Mavuno fertilizers is to manufacture soil-specific, crop-specific fertilizers. These fertilizers include something like 12 to 14 different nutrients, yes. mineral nutrients which are not found in what we call the straight fertilizers like DAP or urea. And both DAP and urea are very acidifying and when the soil is acidic, most crops do not grow well and the yields decline year after year. We managed to reverse this with the new formulations uh, with, with, with uh, soil specific, crop specific Mavuno fertilizers. The real break came in two years ago, 2013, when President Uhuru Kenyatta launched the soil study report um, and recommendations for fertilizer applications in the 47 different counties in Kenya. Mavuno fertilizer was mentioned by name for a vast majority of those counties and, and the year after we, we began to increase our sales directly to the counties and through the national government the Ministry of Agriculture as well. So this year uh, has been the second running year when we have supplied to counties like Transoya and Bungoma and, and, and uh, Kakamega and the results are astounding. Mm. Uh, farmers can see the difference uh, what kind of results have you seen? So, so in maize, which is a yes. sta staple crop, for example, and where Mavuno does exceedingly well, um, until recently farmers were, were uh, uh, obtaining a yield of anywhere from 20 bags, which is a 90 kilo bag, mm. 20 bags per acre, 20 to 22, 23 bags. With Mavuno application, the farmers have moved between 30, 35 bags, and 40 bags is the world standard mm. um, per, per acre. Wow. So we're achieving uh, a 50 percent increase. Now, the irony is that Mavuno fertilizer costs less. Mm. You have to apply a little less mm. than the, the, the traditional fertilizer application rates, and you get a much better better yield. The fertilizer is much more drought resistant, and even with erratic rainfall patterns, we're seeing a much better yield uh, with Mavuno fertilizers. And the same. In, in rice, in sugarcane, in, in potatoes, in of beans. Similar quantum of improvement? Uh, anywhere from 30 to 40 percent increase in yields. In, in, in Mwea rice, for example, we've been carrying out um, uh, trials for the last two years and we've recorded a 25 to 30 percent increase in rice yields with less quantity of fertilizer being applied, Mavula fertilizer, than the comparative fertilizer before. So fertilizer is now what portion of total revenue? So this 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 year was quite quite uh, quite an increase, quite two and a half increase. Uh, what we are planning to do is to find um, uh, a strategic equity partner mm. to uh, to invest in in the Mavuno fertilizer division as a separate company with a separate balance sheet mm. and and to grow continue growing that. The Kenyan fertilizer market is just over half a million tons. This year, our capacity is about 60,000 tons, and we intend to grow this to about 150,000 tons with investment with, with a new uh, strategic investor in the company. Can I also touch on uh, something that has been on the horizon now for a while, which is the sort of reconfiguration on the balance sheet of the short-term loans. You're looking to do a bond. Um, it, uh, we're going to the market soon, I assume. 
What is the thinking behind that? And can you just give us some perspective? So in, in order to complete the, uh, the expansion of, of our clinker capacity at Tanga, we had to resort to a lot of short-term borrowing to finance not only some of the uh, suppliers of equipment late last year, but uh, beginning of this year, um, uh, nearly two billion shillings in, in working capital which went into, into Tanga. Um, all the short-term debt um, is, is repayable within, within, within a 360-day period. And this is what we want to refinance with a five-year bond. Um, shilling bond. Five-year five shilling bond, yes. And uh, we're, we're looking at going to the market in the next uh, couple of weeks now. I must congratulate you because ever since I've watched your share, it's displayed a lot of alpha. You know, when the market is soft, your share holds up and it's, it's, it's doing that again this year because we've had a soft market the last three months. You've got these loyal shareholders. They've stuck with you all this time. What's your message to them as a parting message? The underlying value of the company is much more than what is reflected in the share price in the market capitalization. Tell us how you're calculating that. Cement plants typically cost $250 per ton of installed capacity to build. Assuming our capacity is two and a half million tons, mm. uh, which it is now with, with the commissioning of Tanga plant, the value of the company should be at least, uh, the, the, the replacement cost yes. of, of, of the assets are at least $500 million. Mm. The trade sale value of an existing business with existing markets is anywhere from 300 to 400 million dollars a ton, which translates into 750 million, 800 million dollar capacity. Cement is a long-term business. Cement has been around for hundreds of years in, in the same raw material uh, form transformed into from, from limestone into cement, and there is no substitute for cement. No other binder for construction sells at 100 dollars a ton. This market is going to continue, it's going to continue growing, and East Africa is consuming 12, 13 million tons compared to South Africa, which is at 15 million tons with 45 million population. We are a nearly 135 million population here. Egypt, with a population of 75 million, consumes 65 million tons of cement. This market is going to keep growing, and cement industry is, is, uh, is, is going to keep growing too. Building new plants is going to cost more as, 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 as in, the, in the years to come. So what we have built is an asset at a very low cost and the value of this will be realized as the market picks up, as our volumes pick up in, in, from, from Tanzania. And I think you cannot go wrong in an investment in a cement company in a market like ours. We still have a long way to go before we have built all our roads and bridges and our ports and airports and, and our schools and our housing. Excellent. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Good. Thank you. Good, Good luck, luck for the weekend. weekend. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Look forward to seeing you. Yes, yes. I'm looking forward to it.